Well, hello, everyone. Thank you so much, Lynn, for the introduction and for having me as part of this Lifestyle Medicine 101. It is just such a pleasure um, to be here and to, to be part of this exciting um, topic. So my name is Bethany Wiley, and I am with Banner Health Wellness Department. And I've been in the wellness field since 2006. So it's been a long time. Um, basically, I'm just super thrilled to be part of anything that's prevention and wellness. So I am just really pumped about this, this Lifestyle Medicine 101. So we are here today to talk about stress and the impact it has um, in so many ways on our body, on our thoughts, on our behavior. Um, we're going to go through all of that today. And um, I just want to let you know ahead of time, we will be doing a small activity. So you can pause the video now if you'd like to grab that. It will be a notebook and a marker or pen. And let's begin. First, let me mention that I do not have any disclosures to share, so we can just put that out there and be done with that. And we're going to talk about the signs and symptoms of stress. We're going to talk about the effects of stress and then techniques for managing stress. That's the most important part. And then self-care as a tool for stress management. So I always like to begin by just mentioning that stress is natural. It's just part of our part of our lives, part of our environment. Um, it's a, a physical, mental reaction that we just have to life experiences, and it's a little bit hardwired. Um, you know, looking back in, in years and years of our ancestors, we're just we've dealt with different types of stress over the centuries, and we're hardwired to react to it. Um, stress can be beneficial, right? It can really help us in many ways, um, especially coping with potentially serious situations, or sometimes we're in a good stressful situation where it helps us to perform better, helps us to rise to a challenge. Um, sometimes, of course, stress can be not so beneficial, and that mostly comes from our reaction to stress. So our reaction to stress can help us or harm us. So let me say that one more time. Our reaction to stress, your reaction to stress, my reaction to stress can help you, can help us, can help me, or can harm us. So let's keep that in mind. So what happens when we are in, under stress, any type of stress? We go into fight or flight, and a lot of times we don't know it, but fight or flight is happening sometimes on a daily basis, unfortunately, sometimes in just a moment. So let's talk about fight or flight. We're all very familiar with fight or flight, but I just like to remind us, the body produces chemicals that prepare us. And so we're, given, we're giving, um, getting energy so that we can fight or we can run away. Um, thinking of life-threatening situations, of course, uh, the body responds in the following ways. Our digestion slows down. That helps redirect our blood flow to our muscles and our brain. Uh, breathing increases to give us more oxygen to the muscles. Heart beats faster, raising our blood pressure. Perspiration increases to cool the body. Muscles tense up so we're ready for that action. We're ready to fight or flee. Uh, chemicals are released into our bloodstream. And then sugars and fats are released in the bloodstream to provide us fuel. So this is very intentional, very purposeful. And we are designed this way to be in fight or flight. So then what's the issue? The issue is the chronic stress. So when we are in chronic stress, we are in ongoing fight or flight. So normal situation of fight or flight would be, we're in it for that moment, we're in it to protect our lives, and then we go back to normal, the fear is gone, system should go back to homeostasis, we should go back to normal. However, that isn't happening if we're in chronic stress. So um, our central nervous system sometimes doesn't go back to normal if those stressors don't go away. Um, if stress goes on without relief, we have illness and disease, sometimes those can result. Um, over time, our stress hormones can weaken our immune system, uh, reducing our response to things like you know, foreign invaders, the flu, um, colds, things like that. Um, sometimes people that are in that chronic stressful state may just notice they're, they're more susceptible to getting sick more frequently. And they're like, why am I always sick? Why do I get all these little sicknesses that my grandchildren bring or that my, my children bring home? Um, stress can increase the time. It also takes you to recover from an illness or injury. So with chronic stress, how do we know we're in chronic stress and what, what is creating this chronic stress? So when there's no danger to our life, why aren't we going back to normal? And that's because other situations are triggering that fight or flight. 
things like fears, worries, relationships, lifestyle changes, um, commuting, diseases, finances, and work. So all of these things can be triggers to fight or flight. And sometimes we're just in that ongoing fight or flight without even really recognizing or, or realizing it. So I want you to think for you, what of these examples might be your stress triggers. Do you notice some of these things on this list? Oh yeah, that does trigger a lot of stress for me. And are you in more of that chronic state of stress? And it just starts with awareness. With awareness, we can change our response to that stress because right, our responses can help us or harm us. So here's some signs and symptoms of stress. And I just absolutely love this chart because it's very comprehensive and it's looking at um, all systems. So for me, what, before I started learning a lot about stress and its impacts, I always thought stress was something that just impacts our body. Cause I always knew, oh man, I have a headache or my neck hurts. And I, I just immediately knew it's probably cause I'm stressed. But think about the impacts of stress on your thoughts, your feelings and your behavior. So looking at this chart, I'll just go through a few. You can, you can look at this a little more in detail later, but um, um, signs and symptoms of stress on our body would be change in sex drive, chest, chest pain, decreased immunity, uh, fatigue and tiredness. Um, the list just keeps going on. You can just kind of feel like looking down here. Look at this list and see if you notice something for you, the way your body responds. My biggest one on this column uh, would be gastrointestinal stress. For me, I just, when I am stressed, my stomach's kind of off, my digestion is off, I don't feel good, I feel nauseous, I have more irritable bowel. So that's my number one um, thing I notice in my body uh, when I'm stressed. So we all have personal things on this list that we know, oh yeah, that's me right there. So I want you to think about you and your body. What does stress do to your body? And then also think about what stress does for your thoughts and feelings. So sometimes we're having anxiety or burnout or depression or anxiousness, um, just feeling on edge and just feeling kind of agitated, um, sadness, worrying. So those are those are things that stress can do to our thoughts and our feelings. And I'm sure if you're looking at that chart, you can see which one applies to you, maybe one or two or more, three, four, five. Um, you know, you could certainly look at this chart and circle in your mind uh, which ones apply apply to you. And then looking at behavior, how does how does stress impact our behavior? Sometimes we have angry outbursts with with family and friends. And we're like, why did I just kind of explode on that person? I don't know what's going on. Um, maybe we overeat. Maybe we undereat. Maybe our tobacco use changes. If we're, you know, someone that uses tobacco, um, maybe we aren't sleeping well. Um, there's just so many things on this list that I feel could apply in each column to me that it's a good eye opener to realize that stress impacts us more than just um, more than just our body. And uh, on the under eating and overeating, I know we all tend to fall into one of those categories. I definitely fall into the overeating. And I promise you, I'm not eating vegetables. I do not overeat on my broccoli or on my spinach. I'm overeating on sugar and fat and salt. So it's that cycle that we get into sometimes where we're in those chronic states of stress. So how do you know, how do I know if I'm in chronic stress or regular stress? So people usually notice if they're in that chronic stress, it's really hard to unwind. It's hard to just settle down. You're a little bit maybe jumpy, feeling like you have to just be doing something, um, may feel behind in their daily tasks, may experience um, several of those effects listed on the previous chart in the body, the thoughts and feelings and the behavior. So just kind of think in your mind, is there, is there times in your life where you can recall, oh yes, I was in chronic stress, or maybe you are right now. And that's where we're going to talk about ways to deal with that. So I always like to think of stress as a, as a thief, and that sounds kind of weird. But for me, I've noticed in my life, when I am under stress, I'm not my best self. And it, it takes something away from me. So for me, it takes away my joy, my peace, um, contentment, and just being present. I, I can't be present with my three kids very well when I'm under chronic stress or my spouse. So I want you to think for you, just take a moment here. What does stress take from you? Think about it, file it away, or you can write it down.
So now more importantly, we've already talked about the impact of stress. Um, let's talk about ways to manage it because once again, remember our response can help us or harm us. So ways to manage stress, get into some relaxation systems. And I say systems because it's something you wanna be doing regularly. Relaxation allows recovery from that fight or flight, lets us get out of that chronic state of stress. So here's some example, examples of relaxation techniques. There's breathing techniques, massage, uh, meditation, prayer, Tai Chi, yoga. Um, there's specific breathing patterns and I'll be doing one with you today just as an example that we can practice called four, seven, eight breaths that really help activate the parasympathetic nervous system, which is that calming system. It's the breaks to the fight or flight. So we want to be activating our PNS, the parasympathetic nervous system. Um, and then gratitude journal. So there's a lot of studies out there now if you, if you just kind of look on um, search for it. Um, the three positive things and three things you would write from your day um, that you feel positive about from the littlest of things to the biggest of things. And if you do that every day for 30 days, the studies show that your happiness level goes up and you feel less down. And some studies have shown it's as um, effective as taking an antidepressant. So that just turning our attitude around away from the negative into the positive could have a, a huge impact. Also, some other ways to manage stress would be a mind break activity. So sometimes we just need to step away from the stress, step away from what, what we're doing, let our mind have a break. And we're going to do a quick activity today. That's what your notebook and your pen are for. Um, having healthy boundaries. So this is tricky, right? Sometimes we're a yes people. I'm going to say yes to all my friends and family. I'm going to say yes to my colleagues. I'm going to say yes, yes, yes. And then we burn out and we're stressed. So having healthy boundaries, saying no when it's going to be beneficial for you to say no. Um, having healthy boundaries with people in your life that maybe you're noticing kind of steal your joy or bring you down. Not that we're going to avoid them entirely, but maybe we're going to start having some healthy boundaries with that person. Um, hobby time, right? How often do you allow yourself time to do things that you truly enjoy and things that just lift your spirit up? Um, physical activity, this is a really big one. We've all learned and heard that acti physical activity exercise creates those endorphins, helps release stress, relieve stress. Um, I know for me with physical activity, I've discovered I'm not my best self if I'm not getting a regular exercise routine. Um, reframing thinking and responses. So sometimes our common fuel for our own stress is our own thoughts. What a bummer, right? It's like, oh, how do I stop that from happening? But our own thoughts sometimes are fueling our stress. So do you find yourself stuck in a negative thought process, the negative cycle? I definitely suffer from that. And once I get into that negative cycle, Cycle. It's hard. It's hard to get off of that. So it starts by being aware and then changing some of those thought processes. Um, do you find that you're judgmental or catastrophizing situations? So if there's a challenge that comes your way, do you respond with, it's okay, I can do it. It might be hard, but I can do it. Or do you respond with, oh my gosh, this is the worst thing ever. I can't believe what's happening. I don't think I can do it, right? There's, there's some different ways we can respond um, when challenges come our way. And then socializing with family or friends, this should have a little asterisk next to it, right? Because sometimes family and friends bring us so much joy and make us laugh and we're so happy when we're with them. And other times it can be a little stressful to be around. So just take that with a, a little bit of asterisk that be with your family and friends if they help you. If you're having days where you just need a little space, that's where the healthy boundaries come into play. And then self-care. We'll talk a little bit more about self-care in the next few slides. So here's that blank piece of paper. Grab your paper, grab your marker. I gotta grab my, I only have a pen with me at the moment. Um, so we want a notepad preferably, or you can fold up some paper if you wanna have it thicker. And we're gonna place the notepad on our head. So this is really funny. You guys, I wish I could see you, but here's our notepad, ready? Here's my notepad. I'll turn it this way. Okay, no cheating, no cheating. I want you to be honest here. Here's our pen. So we are ready to draw on top of our head. So I want you to draw a scene. We're just gonna draw a picture here. Um, draw your house. So it can be your house, literally your house, or just a dream house or something that you feel like drawing today for a house. And on that house, let's add a door and some windows. I'm a natural light person. I gotta have a lot of windows on my house. Okay, and if you're a person that likes to have fires in the cold weather season, add a chimney. If you don't want to, that's all right too. This is your house, your drawing. 
I definitely am a plant person. I like greenery. So I'm going to add some bushes to mine. If you'd like to add some bushes, please join me or flowers or uh, a tree. I like trees. I'm going to add a tree. All right. What else should we add to our house today? Let's add a, a sun. Let's make it a sunny day, a happy, sunny sky, and maybe a few clouds. Clouds are always fun to look at. How? When's the last time you laid in the grass and looked up at the clouds? I actually did that this morning at a yoga class, but it's a fun thing to do. And then how about an animal? Are you an animal lover? Let's add, I just got two kittens. Let's add, you can add kittens, dogs, horses, whatever you want to your picture. All right. And now's the fun part. You get to take it down and you get to look at it and see your awesome drawing. So here's my drawing. There's my picture. My cat lost its head a little bit. Unfortunately, it's kind of detached. Oops, sorry, little kitty. Anyway, that's just a fun, goofy thing to do. You can do that at a staff meeting. If you have a group of people you're meeting with, you can do that with a family gathering. You can do it with kids and adults. It's just fun. It's funny. Most people laugh when they're together because they look at each other's drawings. Some people laugh during the activity because you're putting something on your head. Um, anyway, it's the point is it's a mind break activity. Um, I would bet most of us didn't think of anything else during that time. And that was about a two minute activity. Your mind was not focused on your to do's later, what you're cooking for dinner. It was just focused on drawing that picture. So find for you what a mind break activity would look like and, and practice them often. So self-care is another way to manage your stress and self-care is putting systems in place. It's taking deliberate action in order to care for your mental, emotional, and physical health. And it enhances your well-being and happiness. And the best thing about it, this is what I love the most, it activates your best self. Who doesn't want to be their best self on a daily basis? I know I definitely do. And I want to be proud of the choices I've made and the way that I've treated others. And so self-care comes into that as a big component. So consider these seven categories for self-care when you're creating your plan, emotional, financial, mental, physical, relationship, spiritual, and workplace. And we're going to go through some examples just so you can kind of get a feel for what we're talking about. So our first one, emotional self-care. First and foremost, seek professional help when you need it. If you feel like you're struggling with an issue, you keep ruminating on the same old thoughts, you can't change your recordings in your head, you might need to see a counselor. And maybe that's a thing you just do for a short time. I saw a counselor myself for about a year. Um, it, was, it wasn't fun. I didn't love it. However, it brought out things that I didn't even realize. All of my recordings that I had in my head that were negative, that told me I wasn't good enough, all those things just came to the surface and I realized, oh, I didn't even know I had that and now I can change it. So seek help when you need it. Um, have supportive people in your life. You know, there's people around us that once again, bring us joy, build us up. And there's people that drag us down and make us just feel kind of drained when we're done. So just notice being around certain people, try to surround yourself with that. Um, have fun, laugh. Laughter is wonderful for our emotional spirit or for our spirit and our emotions. Um, join a group, maybe socialize. Um, be open with close friends around you. When you open up and start talking about some stressful times, they can be a person to come around and rally with you and help you um, and evaluate, evaluate your stress levels and how you're how you're coping with them. Uh, financial self-care. This is a big one. Finances are a huge stress in our lives, especially in America. Um, so try to plan ahead and have a budget. See a financial advisor, maybe go to a class. I know my spouse and I, we've um, led the Financial Peace University for about uh, about nine different classes we led and we've learned so much and we've changed our financial future and our financial present and the stress in our lives has completely changed on the financial aspect. So um, we got out of debt. We're debt free. Ooh, congratulations. Yay. Um, it was a long journey, but it's so nice to say that in our in our union, in our marriage, finances are not a number one stressor or much of a stressor at all. That is amazing. And keep at least six months of a living expenses in your savings always. That helps buffer some of those financial stresses. Mental self-care. So spending time outdoors, just being outside, noticing nature can have a huge lift to your mental your mental health. Um, surrounding yourself with positive people, which we've talked about. Have a hobby that you enjoy um, that just feeds your spirit. Um, personal growth. Maybe you're feeling a little stagnant. Maybe you need to do something that challenges you and gets you to grow. Um, so think about these things for your, your mental self-care. Um, it's also recommended to do a relaxing activity at least three times a week. 
um, to take care of your mental health. Physical self-care. So don't forget to sleep well. Sleep seven to nine hours a night. There's a lot of issues right now, I think, with sleep. Um, if you can at least make it a priority, you will feel better. I realize for me, I have to at least get seven and a half to eight and a half to feel that sweet spot. Anything less, I start feeling crabby. Um, a healthy nutrition, make sure you're noticing how you feel when you eat certain foods. If they don't make you feel good, don't eat them. Um, go to some of the healthier foods, of course. Regular exercise. So for me, I've noticed, like I said, if I don't exercise regularly, I'm not my best self. I get kind of grouchy. Um, so once I noticed that, I had to put a system in place, which was hard. I decided to wake up earlier than usual. I'm not an early morning person. No, I do not like early mornings. But I decided I need to do this so that I can get my exercise in before my three children wake up and before we're rushing around to do the morning things that we need to do. Um, so now I wake up an hour early, go to my gym, do my exercise, and that's done for the day. And I feel so much better now that I'm in a groove and that system is in place and it's working. relationship self-care. So evaluate the people in your life. Once again, notice how you feel when you're around people. Um, setting those healthy boundaries with the people that don't make you feel uplifted. Um, stay close to the people that fuel you. Um, you can attend special events for family and friends that you're excited to, to do that. And maybe some special events you need to decline. Um, spiritual self-care. So this is a big one. You can choose to meditate, reflect yoga, practicing mindfulness. Um, praying, of course, is a huge one just to lift up your cares and realize that some things aren't in our control and we can let those go through prayer. Um, workplace self-care. So here's where boundaries come into a little bit. Take your breaks. Um, arrive to work and leave at the right times. Don't just keep pushing yourself being a human doer. Realize you're a human being. Um, professional growth. Maybe we're at a workplace uh, at a workplace where we just not feeling like we're growing. Maybe we need to take some things to um, feel like we're growing and then be organized and plan ahead. If you have busier seasons, figure out what you're going to do to care for yourself during those times. And then, of course, when you're creating your self-care plan, think of those seven categories. Pick one or two and start slow. Don't do something in all seven categories. That's going to overwhelm you. So pick something maybe that you feel like you're not the best at and try doing that. If you feel like you're doing really strong in the physical activity, you probably don't need to focus on that one. Just keep doing that one while you start to implement the other areas. Like I said, pick one or two, um, write out your plan, put it somewhere you can see it so that way you're reminded of it regularly and put systems in place that support whatever um, self-care you're going to be doing and tweak it as you need to so that it works for you and that it's not an extra stress doing this self-care. It should be feeling like it's fueling you. So think in your, in your, for your situation, what self-care actions do you practice currently? Um, notice how you feel when you're making that a priority. Sometimes there's a little bit of guilt that comes into that, like, oh, I'm neglecting my kids or I'm neglecting my spouse or I'm neglecting this in order to do the self-care. But you will be a better person when you are your best self and you'll be better, you'll be happier to be around. You'll just be able to plug in more energy into those other people. So make it a priority and notice how you feel when you don't make self-care a priority and try to remember that. So that breathing technique, it's time to practice that. So this is the four, seven, eight breaths. This is a portable stress reliever. You can do this anywhere. You can do it in the car. You can do it at your workspace. You can do it in the bathroom if you want to. You can do it anywhere you want in the shower. Um, it's a breathing technique that activates that parasympathetic nervous system, the calming system, gets you out of that fight or flight. And so it's recommended that these breathing, this breathing technique would be done twice a day and ongoing. Like try it for 30 days and see if you notice a difference. It should help you feel more calm throughout the whole day, even though you're only doing it twice a day. So we're going to practice it right now. I want you to sit in your chair. It's recommended to do this sitting down. Sometimes you get a little lightheaded if you're not used to doing this breathing technique. And you can gaze down or you can close your eyes. And I want you to settle into your chair. And begin just by settling into your chair, just feeling your body in the chair. Maybe take a couple of full breaths as you are settling in. And then rest your tongue on the roof of your mouth right behind your two front teeth. Inhale through your nose for the count of four. Hold your breath for the count of seven. Exhale out your mouth for the count of eight. As you exhale, imagine you're blowing out candles, pursing your lips together. Let's do that again. Inhale through your nose for the count of four. Hold your breath for the count of seven. Exhale out your mouth for the count of eight. Keep that tongue resting on the roof of your mouth. 
Two more times. Inhale through your nose for the count of four. Hold your breath for the count of seven. Exhale out your mouth for the count of eight. And last time, inhale through your nose for the count of four. Hold your breath for the count of seven. And you can pick a different count. Maybe seven is too much of a strain. You can hold for five or six. Exhale out your mouth for the count of eight. And that completes the four cycles of that breathing technique. So when you practice this, it's recommended to do the four cycles. You can find this on YouTube. You can find Dr. Andrew Wiles, the one that made it more popular, but it's also a yoga breathing technique. So you can find that on YouTube if you wanna learn a little bit more about it, but it just brings calm. Um, it helps just activate that parasympathetic nervous system. And, and like I said, it's portable. You can do it wherever you are. I've done this um, usually in the morning and usually before bed. And I've noticed I, I fall asleep much more quickly. We just want to mention for all of you Banner Health employees that are out there, this is just for Banner Health employees, but there's a lot of resources to help you with your self-care and your stress management. So um, you can just kind of see this side, our slide, our Echo webpage has some videos if you'd like to do those videos. And then, of course, through our Virgin Pulse app, you'll find a lot of things through that Will program. So that's just for our Banner employees. We just want to mention that. And I thank you so much for joining me today. Try to keep um, to the forefront of your mind this week that self-care is very important. Make yourself a priority. Um, it's okay to let yourself be a priority. Uh, and then just um, when you create your self-care plan, focus on one or two things. And then uh, don't forget to practice some relaxation techniques this week. And also whether you feel stressed or not, do some of those mind break activities. Thank you so much for allowing me to speak with you today on our stress less, stress less live more. Have a blessed day.